always say is that where you are right now does not define where you're going to be. So mm-hmm. use an angel investor, um, it takes time to see fund and grow. You creating a new avenue, a new exit, then it becomes um, much more bearable where you are. And we always talk about transferable skills. So we say, if you are in a job, you can do all the training that you mm-hmm. can there. A lot of those skills are going to be transferable to your business. You know, we share the difference between having a fixed mindset, which is essentially you and your employee mode, whereby there's no risk or real accountability. Uh, you know, you you know that everything you're doing, you're following instructions to the T and you're just getting paid, you know, the, the paycheck at the end, no matter what. But moving into that studio boss mode, as we call it, the accountability, the risk, it all lies with you. And mm-hmm. you need to really step into that growth mindset in order to be able to think on your feet, start thinking ahead, planning, strategizing as well. Heroes are an inspiring group of people. Every one of them, from the larger than life comic book heroes you see on the big silver screen to the everyday heroes that let us live the privileged lives we do. Every hero has a story to tell. The doctor saving lives at your local hospital. The war veteran down the street who risked his lives for our freedom. The police officers and firefighters who risk their safety to ensure ours. Every hero is special and every story worth telling. But there is one class of heroes that I think is often ignored. The entrepreneur. The creator. The producer. The ones who look at the problems in this world and think to themselves, you know what? I can fix that. I can help people. And I can make a difference. Then they go out and do exactly that by creating a new product or introducing a new service. Some go on to change the world. Others make a world of difference to their customers. Welcome to The Hero Show. Join us as we pull back the masks of the world's finest heropreneurs and learn the secrets to their powers, their success, and their influence. So you can use those secrets to attract more sales, make more money, and experience more freedom in your business. I'm your host, Richard Matthews, and we are on in three, two, one. Hello and welcome back to The Hero Show. My name is Richard Matthews and I am live on the line today with Grace and Charlotte. Grace, are you guys there? Yes, we sure are. Hello, Richard. Hi, Richard. Awesome. Glad to have you here. Real quick, can you guys raise your hands real quick with which one is which so our audience knows who's who? So I'm Grace. And I'm Charlotte. Awesome. So glad to have you guys here. And you guys are joining us all the way from, you said, London in UK. Is that right? We are. And we're so excited to be here with you. And that's the great beauty about the internet that we can just really connect globally. Yeah, I know. It's uh, it's super cool to be able to do that because, you know, we're currently in uh, central Missouri in the middle of the United States and you guys are on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is really yeah. cool. A lot more closer. We love it. Yeah, that's really, really fun. So let me introduce you guys for our guests who don't know who you are. Um, you guys are founders of Grace and Charlotte, the business startup agency. And you guys are business startup strategists, digital marketers, and podcast hosts yourself, and you focus on helping female entrepreneurs build successful businesses online. Is that right? That is correct. Yeah, we absolutely love what we do, and we work with uh, the females that we work with um, to build their businesses in really small pockets of time. A lot of them are still building alongside their nine to five as well. So it's really challenging, but we love what we do. We know we can help them move forward. That's really incredible. And I know um, as a father of three daughters myself, I always really enjoy getting to hear from other female entrepreneurs because I know it's going to give them people to uh, look up to themselves um, and see uh, see the work that you guys are doing. Um, so to start off with, tell me what it is that you guys are known for. What is Grace and Charlotte all about? Who are your primary uh, you know, clients and what are the services that you provide? What is it that people hire you for? So we are known both in the online and offline space um, for working with mainly female entrepreneurs, um, as Charlotte said, who do who want to start and grow an online business whilst they're either still in a nine to five or they've got family and other commitments. So essentially they've got small pockets of time. So we help them to leverage their time in order to leverage their business and just show them through our experiences, through what we do on a a given daily basis as to how to prioritize their time so that they're focusing on the right things in their business to ensure that success. 
because there's always a confusion as to what should I be focusing on? Should it be the logo, the website? You know, all these nice, pretty stuff, which are essentially behind the scenes stuff. Um, yeah. But we want them to just refocus on the right stuff. Um, so getting an offer and making it to the marketplace, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, we're really big on having that combination. Yes, mindset is very important. You know, without that, I mean, mindset is, you know, um, well, 80% to achieving success, essentially. But it's comp combining that with strategy as well. So having those two together in what you're doing, we're really big on really showcasing that combination in everything that we do. So my curiosity then for you is, um, I know you work in, the, in, uh, in London and you work with female entrepreneurs. Do you work with entrepreneurs all over the world or do you work just in the UK or just in Europe? Where, is, where does your customer base come from in this new sort of global world we live in? Oh, which that's the fantastic part actually, all over the world. So we have clients in Malaysia, a lot of clients in the US, um, Canada, UK, all over the world, which is such a blessing to us that we've been able to connect and we can work out the time zone as well. That's often <laughs> yeah. the hardest part um, with the time <laughs> <laughs> but yeah we work with um, clients globally and we do some corporate stuff over here in the UK as well where we work with universities and teach entrepreneurship and we do training for some companies that's based here but um, our one-to-one -one clients and our group programs the ladies are all over the world so it's really lovely that when we have these containers these group programs that people get into meet other women and other business besties basically somewhere they may have never been and what was great I think we had an event recently and one of our clients flew over from the US and we was just like it's just amazing yeah um, yeah yeah that's really cool yeah sorry Richard we're essentially growing um a global CEO sisterhood that's yes. what we call it yes <laughs> yeah, I like it the CEOs <laughs> yeah, yeah. My, 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 uh, I travel full time. We're in an RV. And so the time zone thing is really like important for us because like our time zone is moving all the time. My favorite thing is like on the calendar, you can actually like switch which time zone you're in and then all your appointments shift to the next thing. I was like, oh, that would have been so hard 20 years ago without digital calendars. <laughs> exactly. Missed appointments. Yeah, missed appointments and all sorts of things. So just curious question, because it's not very common for those of us here in the US. Do you guys conduct a business in languages other than, than English? Since I know you mentioned Malaysia and a few other countries. Um, do you guys or do you guys just work in English? Just in English, uh, but that could be ambition for the future. Yeah. Become trilingual. No, but yeah, we've happened, it's been great that all our clients are English speaking, or at least if it has been our first language, they've been coherent. So yeah, mm -hmm. and it's absolutely great. Yeah, I and, just I just know in Europe it's more common to have more than one language than yeah. it is here in the US. Yeah, 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 it is. Yeah. Um. I, well, I do speak French and German, but uh, I don't think I'll be showing up coaching speaking <laughs> any of that. <laughs> you don't you don't speak French enough to speak on stage doing French yet. Pardon. I said you don't speak <laughs> French well enough to speak on stage in French. Oh, definitely not. Definitely not, Richard. No. <laughs> <laughs> so my uh, my next question for you ladies is your origin story right we talk on the show all the time how um every hero has their origin story it's where you started to realize that you were different that maybe you had superpowers maybe you could use them to help other people how did you start to discover or develop the value that you guys can bring to this world and i'd really like to get sort of both of your perspective on where you get, came into the world of entrepreneurship Okay, so we were both at different journeys at the point when we came together in a business partnership. But I'll share from my point of view and then Grace can um, go in and you can merge the stories together. So for me, I was at a point in my career, we both had corporate careers and um, quite demanding. I um, had my oldest daughter at the time as well. And what I found is the company I was in, I basically like hit the glass ceiling and there was nowhere left for me to go. And I felt really yeah. disempowered and in a way that I'm sure many of the listeners would relate, that I didn't feel I was valued enough. Um, I would have the ideas, we'd, probably, we'd have outside consultants come in, do half the work for double the pay I was getting. And I just got to that point where I was frustrated and I knew that actually um, entrepreneurship was 
for me. My story is a little different probably than a lot of other people in that I had started my entrepreneur career very early um, when I was at age 21. I've had a restaurant and catering company for five years, done that and did other bits and pieces. And I went back to corporate. So going yeah. back and then I still had that yearning for entrepreneurship and then feeling dissatisfied, et cetera, and um, unvalued, I was like, okay, I need to do something. I've got so many gifts, so many, you know, um, talents that I can go out there and do. And Grace and I, um, we've been friends for years. We had those moments where we'd often meet for wine. We'd have, you know, we'd say we'd put the world to rights. We'd have our girly talk. We'd both be there and we'd be like, oh, we was in a state where we were so satisfied. We were moaning and we absolutely look back and we hate that point. We mm. really wish we took action, but we'd be there, you know, just saying how dissatisfied we was with our jobs. And then one day I came across, um, I think it was a Facebook ad and it was for a seminar, a motivational seminar. And at that point, we both hadn't been to like, you know, typical Wawa seminar um, yeah. where you go in there. And so they were coming into London. I said, Grace, let's just go see what this is about. Something had told me um, that this was going to, we just needed to go. And we made a decision and we went into central London. We attended this event and it was as if the motivational speaker spoke to us. This has been our first time open-minded. And everything yeah. he said it was like it was the right time for us. And after that event, we went and had coffee in a nearby coffee shop. And we looked at each other. It's like we was exactly on the same wavelength. It was like, let's join forces. Let's create a business. We both have got amazing strengths. Um, and we can, our strengths would really balance out our weaknesses and let's form a business. Because um, Grace had been thinking about doing something herself. I had. But at that time, it was like, actually, we can be a more powerful force together. And we originated and we started um, an events management company, which we had for a couple of years, which was very successful. And it then evolved into what is now the business growth agency. So that was yeah. my point of view, stuck frustrated. And I think Grace yeah. would just want to touch upon where she was at that time. Definitely. And it definitely was the case. So before I go into my uh, backstory, it definitely was a case of when the, the student is ready, the teacher will come. Yeah. And that's really yeah. what opened yeah. our eyes to there's so much more potential within us that we can achieve. So, Richard, just going back with my story, um, I woke up to entrepreneurship, at, I would say, quite late on compared to most people in my, my circle. So I was 28 at the time. And yeah. I come from a very, um, you know, strict African parents, education all the way, and you've got to end up in one of the big fives in terms of being a lawyer, an accountant, a doctor. Yeah, you know, a doctor. That they impress <laughs> upon you. Um, uh, so I did all of the educational university stuff, MBA, got my MBA degree, et cetera, and ended up in a good marketing job. In a, but it was in a really small company. And the, the culture there was really great in terms of my other colleagues, but I was being bullied by my line manager. Um, so it was a very sort of dark time for me. Um, and at the time, I, I should say that I also suffer from a quite severe autoimmune disease. So the stress that that would bring upon me, there were days where I couldn't even get out, get out of bed, just that the thought of going into work and also how it was affecting my body as well, physically. And there were times when I would go home crying, just at something very slight that she had said to me. And I just knew that this couldn't be it for me. There needed to be more. Um, and so that's when, like Charlotte was saying that, we used to meet up. We used to go to war with the world and just think there's got to be something else out there. And they all started to unravel from there to the very point now whereby we share our experiences, how we started to build our businesses in small pockets of time, in a nine to five. Well, you're feeling, you know, some people are really hating their job. They're looking for a way out. But it's reframing all of that and viewing your job, your nine to five, as a, um, investor. an investor, an angel investor, essentially, so that you can start to invest in your personal development, start to invest in your business, to give you that leverage as well. 
That makes a lot of sense. So for you guys, when you, when you came together after that event and formed your, your business, how long did it take you to go from that sort of decision to replacing your nine to five income so that you guys were doing this full time? So um, we, first of all, we had the events management company and we had that and it was super successful well, but then that model didn't suit us. So we was like, it was taking us away from our families. We had to be at all weekends, etc. So we switched the business model, I'd say about three years. Yeah. The stress of doing corporate events, if anyone's done like events management, you know it is super intense. Yes. <laughs> um, way like the super intense brings back memories. Um, so then I think about three years, and then about two years ago, I went part time, and then um, we've been still growing it since as well. So uh, well, it's been five years now. Yeah, yeah, it's five, yeah, five year anniversary yeah, now. Yeah, that we've been doing this five years. That's awesome. So. Um, I know you guys both said you, you had sort of entrepreneurial like feelings from a young age um, and, you know, got into the corporate world. And it's, it's interesting you say, you know, use the, uh, the, the job, so to speak, as an angel investor, because I know a lot of entrepreneurs look at jobs or going back into a job as like a sign of failure. And I know like for myself, um, I, uh, you know, I started my first business when I was like 13. Um, you know, buying candy and selling it wholesale on campus at school. Um, and after that, um, you know, I, I got into post-college, I started my career as a marketing consultant, which is what I do now. Um, and I did that for a number of years until I got to a point where I like, I just couldn't do it anymore because I was, I had some problems, um, mainly confidence problems that I needed to solve um, for pricing and other things. And I ended up going back into the uh, corporate world um and used the uh the corporate place you know steady paycheck you know steady work that kind of thing you don't have to worry about all these other things and you know really knocked it out of the park for them and was able to you know 18 i think it was 18 months later go back and start my uh my consultancy again um and really for me i used the corporate world as like you said like as an investor in my own confidence right um <laughs> that allowed me to go back and really um you know grow my uh grow my company a lot better after after that so i like i just really like that uh that that thought process you have do you find that uh do you find that the women that you share that with really helps them understand sort of where they're at with you know with their job and you know moving into a business that kind of stuff i think absolutely because it reframes so they may be in a situation and what we always say is that where you are right now does not define where you're going to be so mm -hmm. using an angel investor, um, it takes time to see, fund and grow. There is, it's, I think once you can understand that actually you creating a new avenue, a new exit, then it becomes um, much more bearable where you are. And we always talk about transferable skills. So we say, if you are in a job, you, you can do all the training that you mm -hmm. can there. A lot of those skills are going to be transferable to your business. Um, and then when it's time for you to switch from being that employee, which is a big shift, becoming the CEO, as we say, you can use a lot of those skills and you can start to look at how um, that corporation is running their business, how far in advance are they planning, you know, launches, etc. How does the finance department work? So I think when we shift and we look at this, they can see actually there's a bigger picture um, and then that helps them, you know, feel a bit more comfortable with where they are as well. So I think yeah. an angel investment, it really helps. So I know, I know that a, the, the CEO sort of thinking is a very different way of thinking about your business yeah. than even just uh, like a solopreneur or uh, certainly an employee and I'm curious how how much of your teaching revolves around teaching someone to think like a leader um, in their business versus thinking like a you know like a self-employed person or like an employee and how much is that uh, that part of what you do and teach for for your people so John and I we focus on you know creativity and innovation and embodying those leadership skills so you know, we share the difference between having a fixed mindset, which is essentially you in your employee mode, whereby there's no risk or real accountability. Uh, you know, you you know that everything you're doing, you're following instructions to the T and you're just getting paid, you know, the, the paycheck at the end, no matter what. But moving into that CEO boss mode, as we call it, 
the accountability, the risk, it all lies with you. And mm -hmm. you need to really step into that growth mindset in order to be able to, to think on your feet, you, sorry, think on your feet, start thinking ahead, planning, strategizing as well. And being bold to ask the right questions. You're, if you're developing something, you need to be asking your audience what exactly they want, not just making assumptions as well. Yeah. So, you know, embracing fear, going out there, asking the right questions, showing up, being visible, uh, getting into other people's audiences as well in order to, to build up your presence, especially as we work with a lot of online entrepreneurs as well. And all of these actions together just really help you to, to grow and own that person that you want to become, essentially, running that five-figure, six-figure, seven-figure business in the long run. Yeah, and I just yeah. want to touch, I think leadership is so, so important um, in terms of because if you lead yourself first and others will follow as well, and coming from the point of view that um, where before I had a business where I was solo entrepreneur, had um, bricks and mortar, you get into that point where it's just you. And I realised that actually that's not the kind of business we want mm -hmm. for our clients because we want them to start to think about if they were to step away from the business, would it be able to run without them? Are the systems, yeah. could you bring in teams and processes? Um, because after i think for me it's after reading that book um by michael e gerber you don't want to replace one job for another you could jump out of a job but you want to have a business that can give you actually what you wanted it for which a lot of time is a bit more freedom or lifestyle and um, not just to be stuck in the business 24 7. yeah so yeah yeah in that uh, way. um the uh the business name we have behind our business is called five freedoms and uh, mm -hmm. I talk all the time about, uh, um, you know, the, a lot of people are aware of, you know, you know, political freedom or spiritual freedom or financial freedom. Um, and those are the big three that everyone knows about. But the two that most people forget and don't realize how important they are, especially when it comes to building the type of business you're talking about, is time freedom and location freedom, yes. right? If you have the ability to choose what you're doing with your time, right? And if you step away from the business, does the business grow or does it stop? Right. Mm -hmm. um, and same thing with, you know, you, can you choose where you are? Is your business like locking you into one spot? You have to be at the office every day, um, you know, showing up, you know, like a, a, just as an example, if you're a dentist cleaning teeth, like you have to show up and clean teeth or <laughs> you don't have a business or you don't have any, you know, freedom of location. Um, and so it sounds to me like you're helping women get into businesses and like at the very beginning, think about that structure. How are you going to have not just the financial freedom that a business can give you, but also time freedom, location freedom to, you know, build your life the way you want. Yeah, and be happy. Yeah, exactly. Plus, it's massive. Um, and to start it from thinking about it from the beginning, so it becomes an ingrained. And the decisions you make are based on that, even if you're not there yet. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, you mentioned uh, systems and processes. That's such a huge thing, right? And I know uh, that's like, we actually, I, I run a, a, a sub business called Push Button Processes. That's about helping people like build that. systems. <laughs> yeah, build systems and processes. And it's such a huge thing that I think even big businesses miss, right? You know, big, big uh, um, companies and organizations realize that like, it, it's, uh, I, I refer to it as poorly managed chaos. A lot of businesses are running on chaos um, and you can run a successful business chaotically, right? Um, and uh, but what's interesting is there's always, someone's gotta be there patching the holes and making sure it's going forward and everything. And it's like, <laughs> I don't know, building the, building the thing as it's going along down the road. And um, yeah, yeah. it's such a powerful thing when you can get in and actually like, you have systems for everything that's documented well. And, yeah. you know, you can, the, the people that come in and out can, you know, when you have the system and you have the documentation, um, it's not like falling apart as you use, you use it, right? You know? um, and you can plug people in, you can grow faster, you can do a lot of things when you have your systems that's nailed exactly down. It. Yeah, having that standard operating manual so that when the time comes and you want to start growing a team, hiring people in to help you, there's a set mm -hmm. process or, you know, uh, a pathway to follow that so that people can easily come in, pick that up and run with it as well. So you're not a slave to your business. You're not always working in your business, just like you're an employee working in your job as well. 
you know, you, you can step away, you can go on holiday and not come back to a business that's completely crashed and burnt. It's, you can still yeah, take yeah. I was uh, I was really excited a couple of weeks ago. I had a mastermind to go to, um, and it was three days. And I stepped away mm -hmm. from the business for three days, and everything ran without me. It was wonderful. Yeah. So, so like our yeah, our clients still all the client stuff still happened. Payments still went yeah. through. Like everything mm -hmm. still happened. And I was like, yes, it's when we're finally there. It only took me ten years, but you know, uh, it's a price. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, yeah. So my next question for you is about your superpowers, right? This is what you do or build or offer this world that really helps solve problems for people. You know, the things you use to help slay the world's villains, so to speak. And the way I like to frame this um, is if you look at your set of skills, right? The things that you do, there is probably one of those skills that is energizing or empowering the rest of them, right? The, the one thing, your, your zone of genius, so to speak. I'm curious what you think that is for each of you. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Um, I think, going first, if you don't mind, Charlotte, yeah, go ahead. it's definitely, it's helping them to gain that clarity. That's what I was going to uh, say. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're always in sync, Richard. Because yeah. um, when a... a the when people are magnetized to us they're coming from a state whereby they're confused they're not sure about the next step how to start they've got so many questions going on in their mind and we mm -hmm. just help them to gain that clarity and we do it in such a way that the answers are deep within they've actually got all of the answers but we by asking the right questions we help to tease those answers out for them and they start to say it they start to articulate it in the way that resonates with them. And that helps them to then go forward and to start to have stronger messaging when they're reaching out to their, their clientele as well. So it's definitely moving them from confusion to clarity. Um, and when people come to us, whether it's just a, a short introductory call, every time they leave, they always say, oh my gosh, you've opened my eyes up to a whole new world. Thank you, Grace and Charlotte because that cloud has just been lifted. And I'll say, yeah, that's definitely something that we can say is our, our forte, as it were. Your superpower, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the way that sort of comes across for me is that, um, and it, it, it's interesting how common this is in the people who do the type of work you do, is, is knowing how to ask better questions, right? Mm -hmm. Ask questions that other people don't think to ask. Um, ask themselves or ask the people around them and it's when you ask yourself better questions you get better answers right Absolutely. and yeah and for you guys you're not the ones providing the answers right they do right the answers are in them you just have to ask the questions that get the answers to come out um, yeah. so it's a it's a powerful skill and one that uh, um, you know more people I think need to work on developing for themselves it is. Um, and I think Tony Robbins has that quote that the quality of your life is dependent on the questions you ask. Mm -hmm. And it's so true. Like they just need, once you have the answers and what happens with a lot of our clients when they come to us and they get um, the answers, they're able to then make empowered um, actions. And obviously the actions mm -hmm. lead to results, which lead to increased confidence, which leads to momentum. So it's just a snowball and it's just um, unlocking a few key things in that way as well. Yeah, yeah, and it's interesting too because sometimes um, changing the question that you're asking will completely rechange, like change yeah. the frame of reference that you're going into something with, and just yeah. unlocks whole new areas of your brain and and the way you think about problems that you're facing and everything, and it can really change the direction of your business. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we might have so, to get a super uh, cape. We might get a cape now. <laughs> <Yeah>. A cape, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With a question mark on it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That'd that. be awesome. <laughs> so, so the flip side of a superpower is, of course, the fatal flaw, right? Just like Superman has his kryptonite, um, you know, or Batman was, uh, is not actually a superhero, right? He's just uh, really dedicated, has lots of money. <laughs> um, so the fatal flaw in, in the way I like to think about this is, um, something that has held you back in growing your business, something you realize either, you know, a personality flaw or um, a work ethic flaw, something that you've had to deal with. And more importantly, how have you guys sort of 
smoothed over those edges or worked on that flaw for someone who's suffering from it, who's listening, right? How might, you know, they could learn from you. Like for me, it was, uh, um, I was a perfectionist. And one of the things I had to do was just work on getting things off of my plate and into someone else's so they could just get it done and get it out the door. So yeah. what, what is that for you guys? What's held you back and how have you guys sort of overcome that? So I always think that um, Grace and I, we have this thing now. I say that I'm the starter, Grace is the finisher. So for me, um, I love to be creative. I'm the one that will have the idea a million miles a, mi a minute, but I don't always go through to the end and finish it. Um, and so what's been great is that we've been in a partnership and then Grace will finish it, get the details. Um, so that has worked really, really well. And that's been our strengths and weaknesses has worked really well. And maybe Grace starts to look at the details, sometimes less of the um, concept, the creative vision. So if we hadn't been in a partnership, mm -hmm. then I would have made sure that I would have <laughs> taken people on in the business that maybe would have looked at the bigger picture, that would have looked at the detail of maybe a contract, etc. And then maybe Grace, you would have got someone that was more looking on the creative yeah, side. Yeah, yeah, the creative, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. such an yeah. important thing to know where your weaknesses are. Right. Mm -hmm. And I know there, there is a school of thought that says you should shore up your weaknesses and get, make them stronger. Um, but the reality is, and something I've learned over the years is that the wealthiest, most successful people in the world ignore their weaknesses. Right. Mm -hmm. And they focus just on their strength and wherever their zone of genius is. And that's all that they do. Um, yeah. And, and they find other people to put in the places where they have weakness. Exactly. Uh, yeah, rich yeah. a mantra which is do what you do best and outsource the rest yeah. so play yeah. to your strength you know that's your zone of genius as you were saying before and that's what charlotte and i do mm -hmm. and things that we're not that good at or we don't really have time for such as admin finance bit we've got a va we've got an accountant um and you know that, that's the way to start building your team but you're getting quality people who are adding value to what you're already doing as well. Yeah, yeah, and I know that's uh, it's been a, a thing in my my business as well. I'm um, just realizing where I can, where I, I'm best used, right? Mm -hmm. And for me, that's systems and processes and stuff like that and having other people on my team that, um, and I'm, I'm the same way that uh, you are with the, you know, I'm, I'm definitely the visionary, the starter kind of thing. And like, once I've figured out a problem, then like, I don't care anymore. Yeah. So, but it still needs to get done. Right, like it's just, someone still needs to actually do it. I'm like, I figured it out, but like now we need to implement. And I'm like, I have to have people, yeah, I have to have people on my team who will implement because I'm like, figured it out. I don't care anymore. I got to move on to something else. <laughs> on to the next, yeah, yeah. Yep, yeah, on to the next thing. I got to figure something else out because I'm just not engaged in the in the the details of getting things done. So um, yeah, you know, to your point, I have uh, I have um, staff that handles the implementation for me and they are fantastic. My business would not run without them. Um, and I know they listen to my podcast. So, you know, we got to talk, talk them up because they're amazing. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a really cool, um, cool thing to also to note when you are operating in your zone of genius, um, you can push forward so much faster and so much stronger and have much greater strides in your business than when you're working on things that you're weak at, right? Um, yeah. And so you can really, that's where you get competitive advantages. And like you said earlier, like innovating in your space, is gonna happen in your zone of genius, not in your weaknesses. Exactly, exactly. I think it just, as you said, it just speeds up the process when you're willing to just say, okay, and you can't be good at everything. So it's absolutely fine, I think. She said the most successful people identify it and get a um, solution to the problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just a curious question. How do you guys um, encourage people to make that first shift into hiring someone, right? To shore up weaknesses if it's just a, a, you know, hiring an outsourcer for a project or bringing someone on full time? Because I know like the question that entrepreneurs ask themselves all the time is how can I afford that? right? I can't afford to hire someone to do this. Um, and so they do it themselves, right? And to, to that point that we talked about earlier, that's a poor question, right? So how do you reframe mm -hmm. that for people so they ask themselves better questions and start getting people to help supercharge their business? Um, so I think what we do is we actually, we we'll always go back and say, so say someone would have had 
a lot of the time they come to us and they've been trying something for a while and it's not working so it's like really making clear you've been trying to do this for x amount of time you've wasted this amount of time doing this and there's no results you used to outsource it um, with, we always talk with our clients about leveraging your time you've got x amount how can you leverage it and make it work for you x amount of times that one bit and that's either outsourcing it finding someone to do um those jobs or that's as we said maybe leveraging another network or collaborating because we're really looking at how you can maximize what you do have um and make the best of it so don't complain you don't have that time but maximize it and i think when we reframe and we work with our clients and we show them like sometimes we're really crystal clear we just mm -hmm. like look so you this amount of hours you've wasted doing this you could have had that and looked at maybe lead gen or looked at bringing people in or um, have built a system that will be able to replicate again, leveraging your time instead of you trying to do it. I think one of the main things we always talk about is, um, like we talk about trying to get visibility. But like you've been trying to book this or do this for how many times yourself? A VA could have done that in literally like, you know, an hour or two hours because that's, that's a, a skill. And I think when we talk to clients, we actually show them physically, even sometimes look it on a bit of paper, they sort of get it. And we look at, if it's not worked before, we're looking for results now. So we've got to try something differently. Yeah. Yeah, totally. yeah. And I know for, for me, when I, fi when I hired my first person, um, it only took like three months to mm -hmm. double the revenue in my business. Right. Yeah. Just because I was, I suddenly had so much more leveraged time, right. And things were getting done and things that like I would miss and stuff were, were getting accomplished. So like, you know, you, you have more work output and more work output equals more revenue, generally yeah. speaking. Yeah. Exactly that. Yeah. So thinking about the bigger picture at the end of it, they're already working with, within small pockets of time. So why mm -hmm. focus on things that aren't going to get them the revenue? You know, why not? outsource some bits you know and there are some low-cost freelancers yeah. that you can get in virtual assistants as well but they can add really add value and help to push you further along in your business um, rather than you spinning so many plates wearing so many hats yeah so want to know something uh, just interesting the first the first thing i had my my uh my first employee do for me was document processes Mm. And, um, and as we spent, we spent several months documenting processes in our business. And what that did for us was it made all of our processes faster. We could implement faster and get things done faster. We could bring people in to accomplish those things. Um, and it was a really big win for, for my business. I think we've got 150 or so of our processes documented now. Um, awesome. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like leverage on leverage, right? When you have someone come in, and then you have them work on something really powerful, like documenting processes. Yeah. <laughs> it was super cool. Exactly. Save yeah. so much time in the long run. <laughs> so my next question for you is about your common enemy, right? So uh, if you, I like to think about it as like, like this, right? If you could remove one thing from your client's life, right? Wave a magic wand and just remove it and you know they would get much faster or better results because they didn't have that mindset that they were struggling with or something. Something that you guys run into all the time that you wish you could just get rid of. What is that that you guys run into? I think it will be when many of our clients get stuck in their heads, they start to really overthink things and that just leads to procrastination or them just standing still. So mm. it's reframing that and getting them out of their head and actually doing. It's all in the action, the execution. That's where real success actually comes from. Um, so we really work with them to reframe it, to really drill down and ask them, why are you thinking this? Why are you, you know, going several layers deep to the point whereby it's just an excuse. You know, they don't know where this particular limitation has come from. There's no real root to it. And that it, it's much easier for them to get out of that funk and get doing. Um, because on the other side of doing, that's where the clarity comes, the success, the great relationships. It's just so much yeah. better on the other side, yeah. I, I love that. On the other side of doing, that's, yes. a, that's a really great way to say that because the, the, um, the way that I've always looked at that, that uh, mentality, my dad gave this to me and I remember I was, I don't know, 19 at the time and I was like, hey dad, I was considering getting, getting married or like asking this um, young lady to marry me. And, and I was like, how do I know if I'm ready? 
And his response was, there's no such thing as being ready. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. um, and he was like, taking action, right? Doing a thing is what makes you ready. Yeah. Um, and that, um, that mentality has really, really served me well in business. Um, to realize there's no such thing as the planets lining up. There's no such thing as like everything is right. And now you can take action. There's no such thing as being ready to have kids or being ready to get married or ready to take the next step in your business. You just do those things and the act of doing right on the other side of action is where, <laughs> is where readiness comes, comes from. Absolutely. It's so true. And yeah. I mean, the more people could do, they would realize it and see it and just not think that we're just saying it. It's it so true. It's so, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's just so powerful. Mm -hmm. Just, um, uh, just m moving you. If you, cause they put up so many barriers and things that they think all try and preempt may happen. And then when mm -hmm. they actually start doing, start actioning, they realized that it was all made up, you know, nothing, everything that was in their head, it, it hasn't really come to fruition, you know, just through the doing and seeing. And you can yeah. keep figuring it out in the way. You don't have to have it all figured it out yeah. there and then beforehand. Yeah, my, uh, my wife's favorite thing to tell me is that uh, her worrying about things is the most successful thing in her life because everything she worries about, none of it comes true. So she's like, it must be working. <laughs> yeah which true. always cracked me up because it's uh you know it's it's backwards but it's fun so if your <laughs> common enemy is something that you uh if if your common enemy is something you fight against then your driving force is the thing that you fight for right just like spider-man fights to mm -hmm. save new york or batman fights to save gotham or google fights to index and categorize all the world's information what is it that yes. you guys fight for what's your mission I think we fight for um, the clients and women that we work with to take control and ownership back of whether it's their vision, whether it's back the life they're creating, whether it's um, taking back all those excuses that we talked about, or whether it's time, whether it's I've got the kids or whatnot, and turning those things into why so that they can actually create what they want to create. So it's taking back the power for themselves and, um, you know, really important that's why we say CEO move your from employee to CEO because you can actually become the CEO not just of your business but of your life um and that's what we're fighting for for empowerment for these women and that they don't have to settle and that where they are right now actually it doesn't have to determine where you're going to be two years five years ten years from now so do you find that working with female entrepreneurs and helping them sort of step into that type of a role is um is i don't know difficult with the cultural problems that come with being a woman and you know being homemakers and working with children and doing some of those things how do you sort of help women navigate that whole that whole part of you know there's there's so much more to being a woman than just working Right. So how do you help women navigate that and really take hold of, you know, I can be a, I can be a CEO and still do all of the things that women do so much better than men, like be mothers and raise their children and stuff like that. So I, I think as well, being physical, um, real examples of doing it ourselves. So I've got two kids. I've also I've got a seven month old baby. So whilst I literally um, a few days before I gave birth I was due I was on um, signing clients I was working with clients so I'm like hello <laughs> well, you I, can I, do I, this <laughs> maybe not go that OTT but I think even one of my clients recently was like she's pregnant she's like I, now I know I saw you do it mm -hmm. and go through and that you still in you through your business I think us always being real examples actually you can do this as always as um a figure out of a way to actually make this happen and it's funny because we have had male clients we have actually just taken on a um new male client recently but we don't obviously openly do that all the time but you can see the difference mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um the males have a lot less to think about and they're more logical and they're straightforward this 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 and obviously, um, I know it's a bit of a generalisation, but we do see a lot of the women in this space are talking about more stuck in their head, more um, worried about 
usually they put themselves to the bottom of the list because women naturally are the caregivers. Yeah. You know, whether it's looking after at home or maybe even if they have family, parents, whatever. So it's one of the ways we get around it is we talk to them and we say like, actually you matter. So all of this is instrumental on you. And we um, talk about practical self care so that you're able to show up and be in your business and do all the other things you're doing. And not self care where the spa's where you have to go to a spa, et cetera. But just making sure that you fill yourself up, whether it's you do personal development, whether you should take 10 yeah. minutes to just go out and be with your thoughts and mm. that, and how you can practically implement that. And then that empowers you to show up and do what you're doing and be able to be uh, all the I know things that one it does of take the, human. One of the things that really uh, surprised me, we run a supplement company and we sell multivitamins for, you know, we have a men's multivitamin, a women's multivitamin, a prenatal multivitamin, teens, kids, like we have all the multivitamins. Yeah. Our primary mm -hmm. audience is women, right? And what surprised mm -hmm. me is the women's multivitamin by itself is our worst seller. But our prenatal multivitamin right. is one of our best sellers, right? Mm -hmm. Because yes. a yes. woman yes. is very unlikely to take care of herself until she has another life yes. inside and she's like, I'm now I'm taking care yeah. of that life, right? Mm -hmm. so they're so often looking at taking care of the people around them right? Whether that's their yeah, family yeah. or their employees or their work environment. So it's just, it's interesting yeah. to see how, how you guys have to help and coach women to, you know, do that self-care. Yeah, that's so true what you said. Always put to the bottom of the list, everyone else. So yeah, that's just physical data. You've got that just proves that point. Yeah. <laughs> but when we yeah. show up, Richard, Doug and I, we're very transparent and we're real raw and authentic. And that's what resonates with the mm. people that we work with. Because we show them, you know, there will be good days, there will be bad days, but it's how to deal yeah. with those bad days as well. To yeah, reframe yeah. things and to get them from track. Yeah. I tell a lot of my clients that, you know, I work from home. I got four kids and there's pretty good chance that they'll walk in on our conversation, stuff like that. I actually, earlier in the webinar, my, uh, my 10 month old just started walking and she like walked all the way up here and I'm like, Hey Karen, well, you got to come get the baby. She's invading the interview. Right. Cause uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's the way thing goes, but yeah, you can, you can certainly run your business um, yeah. and still parent and take care of life and do those things. Yeah. Um, so yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's not, nothing. it's really cool. And what we do is not polished. We, we show that things can happen, you know, yeah. Charlotte's little baby sometimes in our Facebook <laughs> live yeah. or our webinars. And that's just the way it goes. Yeah. So, yeah. It just yeah. happens. Right. And we just, yeah. just uh, on another, <laughs> another uh, level of that, we just adopted a cat and the cat I, really liked me know. for some reason. Yeah. He like walked across. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like he keeps walking across every time I do an interview so you know now he's gonna just be a regular thing on our show his, for our guests who see him his name's Thomas O'Malley the no, alley cat no, from no, Disney no. yeah yeah so so he'll be probably a regular you'll see his tail come through our interview all the time now so it's you know that's just life right can't always control all those things exactly makes it look something so my, uh, my next question for you is more on the practical side, right? So when it comes to running a business today um, and, and actually doing the things that you do, right? Maybe uh, we call this your hero's tool belt, right? Maybe you have a big magical hammer like Thor or a bulletproof vest like your neighborhood police officer, or maybe you just really love how Evernote helps you organize your thoughts for your business, right? What are some of the tools either for you know client management lead management product development that you couldn't do without today that really help you do what you do in your business yeah um well there's so many actually well one thing is that charlotte and i've got something we call our power hours as well so that helps us frame our days where we should be focusing on uh, the non-negotiables in our business the lead generation income producing mm -hmm. activities and that's what we, we share and teach with our clients and audiences as well. Um, everything is written down, it's scheduled. Google Calendar is our best friend. Yes. Uh, you know, we, we practically live on it, you know, just to make sure that, okay, we've got a, a power call here. We've got our podcast with Richard at this time. Mm -hmm. So we get those alerts all the time throughout the day as well. And that just keeps us on track. Um, in terms of other processes... Hello. Trello. Yeah, we use Trello, Project Management Board as well. Um, yeah, Trello is amazing. I've run my whole yeah, business on Trello. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. So we've got uh, processes mapped out, our assets mapped out, uh, that's shared with our team as well. Um, in terms of sharing stuff, we're, we use Dropbox and Google Calendar. So they're at, you know, very good tools, cloud storage based, so you can yeah. have it on the go, access from anywhere in the world. I think for us as well, because of both of us, we need to access the stuff when we're not always together and whoever else as well. So the cloud's been massive. Like everything has to get saved up into the cloud. And to yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. We, uh, we pretty much use Google Drive for that. Like, it, I don't know how we would live without Google Drive because we got to disperse yeah, the team, yeah. right? Our team's all over the place. Um, yeah. But I, I want to I touch on something that you, you, you mentioned was the calendar, because uh, I think we're on, like, this is like episode 74 or something like that for our show. And probably yeah. out of 77, 74 episodes, like 70 people have mentioned how important their calendar is to their life, right? And I remember it was th th about this time last year, I was in the car with my stepdad. And I mentioned uh, that, like, I live and die by my calendar. And he was like, that's crazy. How could you live and die by your calendar? Like, like that's dumb. People don't do that. And I'm like, yeah. like my, um, and entrepreneurs, every entrepreneur I know, um, mm. says that, that their calendar calendar is freedom. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and the, the more things are scheduled, the more free your life is. Yeah, exactly. um, and, yeah. and it's, it's a, it's a weird mindset because people think that like, Hey, if it's all, all of my stuff is scheduled, even my free time that I spend with my family is scheduled onto the calendar. <laughs> then you don't have freedom but yeah yeah it's, it's, but what the yeah if it's not scheduled it's not there it doesn't happen and yeah so for for me at least and for everyone i know that's been in this in this space when you have it on the calendar it frees up the mind space right and yeah. you know you know like hey i've got this time this is all i need to do here right i can give myself 100 percent to whatever that is whether that's playing with my kids or cooking dinner or adventuring with my family or doing work right wherever whatever's on the calendar that's what i i can put my whole attention to that because everything is scheduled um so i was just curious what your uh, what your thoughts were on that it's so true we always say a fun even has to be scheduled for me because it's so busy this is fun time we're having fun now whether we like it or not <laughs> <laughs> when fun's happening it is instrumental and as you said i think um us as human beings now we're such a busy society if we were to try and retain all that, it would literally send us crazy. So we need that brain dump. We need to have that and have that order and other people, if they have access to be able to check in as well. And for me as well, because I'm quite a visual person at home, I would um, have my whiteboard as well. And the whiteboard again is just another visual prompt of what is mostly on the calendar, but like what big projects are month by month. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really cool there. And my last thing that I actually use, um, I'll probably use it a little bit more than you, is my alarm because I, I will forget things. So every minute my alarm, we're lucky it hasn't happened in this interview yet, will alarm if something, even to the point of just reminding me to breathe, take time out. Yeah, and take your breath. <laughs> yeah yeah i i do the same thing right i set alarms to you know remember to take you know take my supplement or something like that or um yeah. remember to get up and like i i have i have this problem where i will forget to eat um <laughs> oh, not because right. i don't like not because i don't like food or anything i love to eat i just you know, I get in so into working that I'm like, I need to stop. And like, if I don't put lunch on the calendar, I will skip it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, so I have to uh, make sure it's, it's in the calendar. And the thing again, that it, it allows you freedom in those spaces to, you know, where, when you, you said you schedule your fun, right? As soon as the thing says schedule fun, you can just turn off your brain for other things and you can be there. You can be present. Um, so, yeah. Super powerful, yes. I think. Yeah, it's not. It's, uh, if it's not scheduled, it's not getting done. That's what we. Yeah, yeah. We My, uh, I have a, uh, I have a couple of calendars I keep on my phone that uh, um, I've got a like a family calendar, and I'm like, I tell my wife all the time, I was like, if you want me to be there, even if it's just super simple stuff, just drop it on the family calendar because like all of my appointment scheduling stuff, all of my team. Like if they need access to me, they're going to check the calendar and it's going to, anything you put on the family calendar will block my time out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. And yeah. So, yeah. So the, I was like that, like the, I, we use uh, what do you call them? One of those like scheduling things, um, like schedule mm -hmm. once or whatever. So people can schedule appointments and like, it'll check my family calendar as well as my own personal calendars. 
I was like, so if you want it, if you want me to be available, you can block off the day, block off the thing, and like my <laughs> systems will handle the rest. <laughs> I've got access. <laughs> yeah, you got oh, access, gosh. right? So, um, but yeah, it's like I have to train. I have to train everyone, right? My my wife, my family, my kids, my workers, my uh, my my employees, the the my yeah. clients that, uh, that I work with. It's like my calendar. I live and die by it. Um, yeah. Lucky for me, most of my clients are also entrepreneurs, and they live and die by their calendar too. So, <laughs> <laughs> all the same craziness. Yeah. It's an like outsider yeah. that everyone's like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They'll never the, get uh, it. The, my my wife gets it, but like my my family who is not entrepreneurs, they're like, I I don't understand. Like, why does it have to be on your calendar for it to exist? And I'm like, because literally, if it's not on the calendar, I will <laughs> not be there. <laughs> so, yeah. So I want to uh, um, want to talk a little about your own personal heroes, right? So just like Frodo had Gandalf, or Luke had Obi Wan Kenobi, or Robert Kiyosaki had his rich dad. Who were some of your heroes? Were they real life mentors? speakers or authors, peers who are maybe a couple of years ahead of you, and how important were they to what you two have accomplished so far in your business career? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so going first, I mean, every time I think about a real life hero, straight away, I immediately think of this woman, Michelle Obama, just because of everything she embodies, um, you know, the, the elegance and that sort of regal nature, but also she's a leader in her own right. You know, she yeah. owns a story. She's very much empowering, encouraging, giving back as well. And it is, it's truly a woman that I look up to and uh, really admire as well. Um, you know, just how she's doing it and her, her presence in this world as well. Yeah, so yeah. She's definitely, definitely a modern day hero. Yeah, 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 she is. She is. And in terms of, you know, somebody closer to my heart, I would probably say my mum as well is my hero. Um, you know, just in terms of, she's been through a lot health-wise, um, you know, she's had really down times in life as well, but she's resilient. She keeps on, you know, bouncing back, being there for the family, caring for all of us all the time. And now she's really trying to take back control and find her superpower at the moment. And I'm loving seeing that change in her as well, that transformation as it's slowly starting to, to happen for her as well. So they, they're gonna be my two, yeah, two heroes. Okay, so I think for me, um, probably my parents first, and that's because I saw them, um, they introduced entrepreneurship to me from a really early age. So my dad, um, when I was 14, I started working with my dad's company. When I was um, about, I think, six or seven, I saw my mum, she had a bridal company. So they made it be normal to me to know that entrepreneurship was actually accessible. You could do it. And I saw them grow their business and got to be involved in it. So that I definitely think shaped on why I was able, when I'd done the degree and stuff, I thought actually I could go into entrepreneurship without having to go and get a job because I saw actually it was quite normal and it wasn't something that would be frowned upon. So I think that was a massive influence and why um, I've always been able to feel bold enough to be able to go and do that because of that support. So I think massively both my parents. And then I had a, um, a mentor when at my first business I was 21 and she st I really wish I was still in touch with her now because she never knew how much she impacted me and I think the great thing about a mentor is they can often see ahead for you before you can they uh, yeah. believe in uh, you before often you can as well and it can really impact them through their guidance and with this particular lady her guidance, the path she set me on, even doing certain qualifications, the way she helped me shape my business, it definitely is influencing even what we do now and just me thinking as a as a woman, as a person, that you can always do more. And I think that's what I impart and I know Grace does in our clients as well. It's that belief sometimes before they even believe. And it's super powerful when you can hold on to that until you get your own self-belief as well. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing too how impactful certain people will be in your life right and I look back over my life and I had you know teachers and business people who have been heroes of mine um you know and my parents as well and and you don't realize sometimes until years later like little things yeah. that someone said or showed you how to do how how much they impacted your life yeah um, and you know like one of the things that really surprised me was like my son just started reading the rich dad books 
um, the Rich Dad Poor Dad series of books. And, um, and he's listening to them on audiobook because he's an auditory learner. Um, and mm -hmm. so I'm getting to hear them again and realizing it was like, wow, like a lot of my like thinking and thought processes came from like reading those books as a kid myself. Um, and you don't realize mm -hmm. that until you're an adult, and you go back and look at them. You're like, oh, wow, that's like a thing I say all the time. And it came from this, you know, hero in my life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's great. Hindsight is an amazing thing to see afterwards. And sometimes no, but that's great. Your son's reading those books. How old is he? He's 10. I've got a uh, four of them. I've got a 10 year old, a six year old, a three year old and an 11 month old. Love it. Busy yeah, house. Yeah. 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 You can probably hear them in the background. Actually, they're over there. <laughs> I can't. So they're surprisingly quiet. Yeah. I actually quite hear them. Probably repeat that bit. Yeah. Yeah. They're, uh, they are amazing. I don't know what I would be doing in my life without them, but they're, uh, um, yeah, they're the reason I do pretty much everything I do. So. Yeah yeah um, yeah it's super fun um so my last question for you here is guiding principles right top one or two principles or actions that you regularly use that you think contribute to the success and influence that you guys have in your business maybe something you guys wish you had known when you first started out on this uh, entrepreneurial journey together i think one for me would be perfection doesn't exist for a long time, I think that held us back in thinking that things needed to be a certain way, um, you need to show up, it needed to look like X, Y, and Z, you need to do this in order to do that. And when they show us, call it shackles, because it holds so many people back, um, mm -hmm. when they could have seen the mental results, whatever it may look like for them, if they just actually got on with it and didn't worry about it needing to look or feel a certain way, I think that goes in all aspects of your life. So that perfection it doesn't exist um you may think it does but it doesn't because no one or nothing or no launch no book no process no business is mm -hmm. perfect um and the more you understand that is the more you'll just actually go out there and do and i think that's been a big guide principle for us now if things aren't perfect we're still safe we put a date to it we're like okay we're still getting it out um we're still going to do it and then we'll tweak it as long as you know it's yeah. it, it, it evolving process yeah, I, I, I would definitely like, to follow on for that. Would say get support as well. You don't have to do it alone. I, I'm of the view that there's no such thing as a self-made millionaire because they always had somebody around them, whether it's somebody in their team, um, like-minded other individuals or you know, business besties as well, or a mentor. But get support. You don't have to do it alone. Surround yourself with like-minded people people that get it, people that are on the same journey with you, people that are a few steps ahead of you as well, so that you're always striving and moving forward and pulling yourself forward as well. So it's something that I really try to ingrain and reiterate when I'm talking to my audiences and our clients as well. You know, don't just figure it out alone, get help, talk to other people as well. Yeah, yeah, that's a, it's a really important point too, is understanding how important it is to, like, uh, I, I like to think in terms of like, you should have someone that is behind you, that you're helping, and someone that's in front of you that you're getting help from, right? Because you, there's so much value on both sides of that, as well as having running partners, peers that you're running along with. Um, yeah. And the, that, that triad of relationships, if you can set those up in your life, it really helps push you forward. Um, and to, to that point, one of my peers that I run with in my business mentioned to me something about perfectionism that has really, really stuck. Um, and she said that, uh, perfection is the lowest standard you can hold yourself to because mm -hmm. perfection is not something you can achieve. Right. Yes. So it's like, you have to, if you, if you're, um, you, if it's, if it's the lowest standard, right. And you're looking to hold your business to a high standard, then perfection is not it. Right. Um, so you have to have a different standard. And for me, it's been shipping, right? You have to, you have to ship, you have to get the, the product or the service out to market and actually make the offer. Right. And if you don't ever get there, you don't, you don't have anything. So it's a, a much better standard to hold yourself to. Yeah. I love that reframe. Yeah. So it just eliminates it all together. It's not yeah. hot, it's a low end. We're not going for low. So just take it out of the equation. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to have to take uh, it. <laughs> 
Uh, it's the yeah. lowest standard you can hold yourself to is perfection. Um, so anyways, that was a, it was a great reframe for me because as someone who struggles with wanting everything to be perfect um, and realizing mm -hmm. that like, you know, you just have to, you have to do it and like get things out and, you know, adjust and course correct as you're going along. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it makes, a, makes a lot of difference. So that is basically it for our uh for the interview but i do one last thing it's like something i call the hero challenge and the hero challenge is pretty simple do it on every show um it's basically this do you guys have someone in your network or in your life that you think has a cool entrepreneurial story who are they first names are fine and why do you think you should sh um, they should come on our show and share their story Ooh, i would say it's your name. yeah, yeah. Oh, so we always think Oh, yeah, <laughs> can't wait to stop it. We're magic into one, guys. <laughs> this is what happens. <laughs> Become one So, yeah, we've got um, an amazing client called Shauna mm -hmm. who has taught how many thousands of children? Yeah, over the years. Her, um, I think it's over 10,000. Yeah, we over 10,000 children um, over a short period of time. And she's known in the space as a of, uh, a child whisperer so really working with children understanding children and working with families essentially really empowering families and she's just going from strength to strength you know just really taking her brand and running with it and magnetizing families to come into her world and work with her so we just think she would be the perfect fit for your show and just sharing a story what she's been through over the years and you know her forward vision as well as to where she wants to take her her brand and business to. Yeah, and I think yeah. what's also great about her, she's had some personal struggles, mm. and she's managed to use that to fuel her, which her story to tell. But I think it's a great story she's ever able to share um, what she's been through. That's really cool. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll reach out after the show and see about uh, um, giving her details so we can have her on. Because that sounds really fascinating to me just on a personal level because I have a bunch of kids. I would love to be able to do child whispering <laughs> stuff. Um, yes. And I, I don't like, I, I mentioned my three younger ones are daughters um, and I love the um, crap out of them, but they don't make any sense at all. Um, no. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of them might... My toddler is something else. I can't. I can't even begin to describe like the things that she says and does. I'm like, I don't. I don't get it. Uh, my son, I totally understand. Right, like him and I are on the same wavelength all the time. And like, I get him. And like, my he does things, and my wife's like, I don't understand. I'm like, I get it totally. Like, he makes sense. But my daughter's, it's like another <laughs> world completely. So wait to make it older and older, it get worse. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, that's Surely what everyone says. That once they uh, once they hit uh, once they hit teenagerhood, I hear it. Um, it, it gets significantly more fun. Um, yeah, and I was uh, I I just realized mm -hmm. the other day I'm gonna have a 17 year old and a 15 year old and a 12 year old girl in my house at the same time, right when my son leaves. Right, so my son's gonna leave, and I'm gonna I'm have three teenage anything. daughters. <laughs> that's one against you against all of them and um, the best thing is you just say yeah that's the advice i give you sure will give you advice <laughs> yeah i figure the way that's gonna go down is is uh is i'm you know every four weeks or so i'm gonna spend the weekend over at my son's house and be like hey i got kicked <laughs> out <laughs> well, I'll on the calendar it probably will be the same way yeah. to say you'll be good schedule it in yeah, i'll be good i'll just move <laughs> move in with my son for a while um but yeah so thank you guys so much for coming on the show i really appreciate it it was super fun getting to talk to both of you grace and charlotte um so last thing we do is just where can people find you right who are the right people to reach out and where can they find you online um for uh um, if they're looking to work with someone like you guys so we're usually hanging out on facebook um we've got our free community called the female entrepreneur collective so that's where we have all the CEOs all vibing off each other. It's really highly interactive, really great vibes there. Um, uh, we've also got our Instagram as well, which is Grace underscore and underscore Charlotte underscore. <laughs> Sorry, it's a bit confusing. <laughs> but Grace and Charlotte was taken. <laughs> yes. Popular names. Popular names. 
Yeah, so you can hit us up on either Facebook or Instagram. And if you want to hit us up personally, I'm Grace Nelson and this is Charlotte Barrett. And you can find our profiles on Facebook as such. Awesome. We'll see if we can uh, link all those in the show notes for people on here. Um, so again, thank you so much for coming on the show, you guys. Do you guys have any final words of wisdom for our audience before we hit this uh, stop record button and end the episode? i just like to say thank you for having us. We've had a real ball. And for everyone, if um, to keep on shining with their superpowers, and if they haven't found that yet, go on that journey because everyone has something amazing to go out and share with the world as well. Yeah, and stop sitting on the fence. Stop being stuck in your head. Start now. That's when the magic, the true magic, will start to unravel. Yeah, you heard of them. Start now, find your superpowers, get out there. The world needs to hear your story, needs your value, needs the things that you can bring to the table. So again, uh, thank you so much for coming on to the show. And I can't wait to have you guys back on in the future sometime. Perfect. Thank you, Richard. Bye-bye. Thank you.